Hi everyone, in this short course I will talk about contextual inquiry, a design research method that is highly valuable for getting new insights. I'm Gideon Stomp, professor at In Holland University of Applied Sciences. The problem with interviews is that you can access what people know, what they know. For instance, if you ask people about their work, they will explain to you what is important, what is problematic, what is what they think should change and things like that. But on the moment you're going to ask them how they do it, how they do their work, how they organize their work, or for instance, how they make designs or other kinds of activities like how they ride a bike or how they play piano. The thing is, asking how is very difficult. People know a lot of things, they're experts in many things, but how they do things, they can not easily verbalize. They cannot explain it to you. For that reason, there is a specific method developed and it's used a lot in design research. It's named contextual inquiry. And contextual inquiry, to make it very simple, basically is doing an interview while people are doing something. So rather uh, than just interviewing someone like the nurse here in this example, behind the desk and asking all kinds of questions. You go there, you take a look while they're working and the, you do an interview while they are doing a task. And you get a totally different level of acquiring data. Whatever people do, regardless whether it's work or playing the piano or driving a car, you cannot see it as standalone behavior apart from the context. If you want to understand why this nurse is doing specific kinds of things in her work, and what kind of order she does things, what kind of tools she uses, you have to take a look at the context they are working. Now, for that reason, a contextual inquiry looks at people, interviews people while they are interacting with the tools, with the environment, with all kinds of things, with other people. And while they're doing that, you learn how they do things. To set up a contextual inquiry, we have a couple of steps. First stage is prepare well. A contextual inquiry requires a lot of effort, so you better prepare yourself really, really good. So you have to find out who is the user that I like to do an interview with, what are his or her goals and tasks she's doing, and because the tasks are quite large, eh, what people do in the work, you need to decide upfront what you will study and what you will not study. Now, as I said, it takes a lot of time, so prepare yourself for four up till seven uh, interviews uh, and already accept the fact that that will take uh, at least a month to get it organized and done. Then you do the actual interview, uh, which is at the place where people do their task, where they do their work. And like every interview, you have to start with an introduction. Who are you and who is the other person? And uh, can you explain a little bit uh, what your work is all about and things like that? And then there is this crucial question, the switch. And that is, can you show me how? Can you show me how you do it? So rather than just doing an interview, you ask them to show it what they do and how they do it. And from there on, you just go on using this show me how you do it. Now, while you are interviewing them, uh, observe them, take a look at what they do, what kind of tools they use, and ask questions. I named them ICE questions, that's from identify what they're doing, let them clarify, to see from clarify why they are doing it, and let them extend on what is the relation of these things uh, to, to other things that they do. So identify, clarify, and extend. And then you can start all over again. Identify a new thing, let them clarify and, and extend. Now, at the end of the interview, you summarize, is it correct that, did I see this properly, uh, is this very important for you, and so on. That's the way how an interview is conducted. Meanwhile, while doing the interview, take loads of notes, and if you're allowed to do it, always check, Make photos, make movies of the environment, of the tools, of the things they do, uh, how they do it, and so on. Then we move to the next stage, and that's analysis. And you first analyze each in the interview individually and do it as quickly as possible after the interview, preferably within a day. 
and do it together with other people because they have other ways of looking at things. They have other perspectives, other frames, and will see different things. So organize a meeting with the team and make sure that you got everything there all your notes, the photos, and the videos. Start presenting it and analyze it together. How this analysis is done, uh, there's a lot of literature about that. And basically what they, most of these books say is that there are five models, five lenses that you can use to analyze what you just saw and what you uh, observed and recorded. And these five models, a flow model, a sequence model, they help you, uh, they guide you through the analysis process. It takes far too much time to explain each of these models, each of these lenses, basically uh, what it is. Uh, and there are good books about it, so uh, you can find it back over there. I just show them to you. The flow, flow model basically captures the communication and coordination between people, who does what. Uh, who talks to who at what moment in time and things like that. So it, it shows basically how work is organized. And there's a sequence model. A sequence model is, is focusing on what's done in what order. So first this, then that, then that, then that, and so on. So it's a different lens to look at how things are getting. You have the environment model, which is basically a map of how the environment looks like. Here is the table, there is the computer, here are the tools and things like that. That's where the door is. Gives another lens, another in. You have artifacts model, which is what people produce. And so if people make a note for themselves, you make a photo of it and you say, hey, he's writing a note to himself. That's an artifact, something that is produced. But it can also be the, the final product or something that is uh, done like a service, like, like a nurse is doing something with a patient that's also can be an artifact. And the last one is a cultural model, which is the hardest to understand, but it tries to capture a little bit the standards, the norms that people have in the specific environment. Now, as I said, I won't go into depth in each of these models, but they help you to guide your analysis. Now, once you did all the interviews, he did all the individual analysis of those interviews, it's time for the next stage. And that's make sense of the data you just gathered. And you see an example here of uh, my own work in the past. And what you see here is that per interview, we made one big poster with photos, with an environmental model, uh, with some quotes and stuff like that. We put them all together. There are actually also a couple of computers over there, a couple of laptops with movies and photos that are not on the poster. And then together with the team, we try to make sense of the data across all those interviews. What were the patterns that we see? What kind of things emerge? What kind of things did we learn? And in time, you will learn, for instance, how work is organized differently per site or how it is always the same and things like that. I told you a little bit how contextual inquiry is done. Um, I don't know if I said it already, but a contextual inquiry, according to me, is one of those uh, methods which gives you probably the deepest insights into how people do things. They talk with you and at the same time they show it to you. You see the tools, you see how the tools are organized, you see how their environment is, you see their practice and how practice constitutes their thinking and what they do. So contextual inquiry is very rich, gives you much insights, and is very helpful for design research. However, there are a couple of downsides as well. And the most important thing is organizing the interviews, doing the interviews, making those photos, making those movies. It is extremely labor intensive. You better do a contextual inquiry, also the interviews with two or three persons. And then the analysis takes even more time. Per, per interview takes a lot of time. You have to make the photos, you have to prepare well, then you have to get it all together. It's extremely time consuming. So in a way, contextual inquiry belongs to, according to me, the top three of excellent methods to acquire insights. And at the same time, it's so intensive and time consuming that you can 
use it only in those situations you have loads of time and loads of resources thank you very much for your time i hope you enjoyed this and i see you in another small lecture back again